Hi friends, it's Monica and welcome to my reaction to episodes 2 and 3 of season 2 of Shadow and Bone. So welcome back and if you have not seen the premiere episode of my reaction to it, that would be linked down below in all to the other episode reactions as they upload will be down in the description box below as well. And I'm so sorry if I sound congested. I am. <laughs> I'm recovering a bit from a sickness and anyways let's just get right to my reaction. So I really do like how for this season that we are getting these unique title intros for each episode. It just makes it a little more fun for us viewers. What do you want with us then? With you? Nothing. Honestly I'm not even sure who you are. But the sun's on huh? well, you have to know you're quite valuable. I love Nikolai so much here. <laughs> He's so funny and He's like, I don't really know who you are, Mal, but I'm here for Elena, not you. I don't even know who you are. Tear down the fog. By hunting Moritz over sea whip. There's adventure, danger, money. Now you're speaking my language. His reaction is so great. I love Nikolai. And I do think that Mal and Elena, they're quite desperate at this point so they're just enlisting help wherever they can and let's see if that will work out for them. Alina, it will only grow worse no matter how far or fast you run you will come to accept that it's you and me. I feel like the Darkling appealing to Alina here is trying to win over her but he broke their trust that they had in season one when he try to take over her power and it's not working on Alina. Not again. Is this how you justify your actions? Your loneliness? I feel like Alina's like pretty much taunting the Darkling saying, oh sad little Darkling, you're all lost and alone again. Like you could have had me but you really <laughs> did it in a toxic way. Let's be real. So I feel like those little interactions between the Darkling and Alina, it's through their minds. Like it has to be like, because they're both waking up after these conversations like, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's a dream or a nightmare. But I think there's something more. You're a shadow monster. Thank you. My Nietzsche voyeur. And they are with me always. I like the term that they use for the shadow monsters, the Nichovoya, and it's just cool. And we're seeing how the Darkling is sick somehow. Oh gosh, like, I, f I would feel so terrified if I had this weird shadow monster coming at me like Jenya here. I feel so bad for Jenya, but she's doing the best she can in her situation. The both of us blowing up the crew club. Makes you wonder what else he's willing to destroy. I want to pause here because what Inej says, it's like, are Inej and Jesper doubting Kata's leadership skills? Like, his lack of communication? Is this place still serving breakfast? I swear I'm Nina. I always love to eat. I love food. I'm a foodie. And currently, I don't have any taste or smell, so it's been a little bit sad when I'm eating. Anyways. Who is this Pekka Rollins? Every time you say his name your blood pressure skyrockets. That's not part of your purview, heart render. And with Nina questioning Kaz directly and him being like, you don't, you don't get that information. No one does because as we saw in the flashback that Kaz has a personal connection to Pekka Rollins, which none of them know. And I love from Matthias that He's still grappling with his relationship that he had with Nina and with him being feared in and Idriskela that they looked down upon Grisha. Seeing how he still really hung up over her makes me happy, but I'm sad for Matthias still being in jail. Not until you tell me what happened between you and Pekka. All you need to know is that I have a reason. There's enough secrecy in this crew as is. Secrecy is the only way to survive the barrel and edge. Again, we have members of the crew kind of questioning Kaz and Kaz still not giving any answers. But for Kaz, this character it makes sense for why that is. And if you do know, yeah. 
What's this about? I'm the client. No client of mine has ever made such demands. You can't do it all on your own. You need me. And I do like how Nick Clyde points out here that Alina isn't all powerful and that she can't do it all alone. So she needs him. And I love that there's just a wall of weapons ready behind a curtain. He just pulled the little tassel and it's just like weapons. <laughs> Hello, mother. Bagra is just sitting there like, son. Damn, the sea whip looks good, CGI wise. <laughs> and Mal's in danger, and Alina will help protect Mal. And given that it's only episode two and we're already fighting the sea whip, let's see what happens. <laughs> Why is this the best way to lower Kaz and Nash is just struggling to hold his weight? And like the sea whip I'm being amplified now into Alina and the Darkling nose because of the weird thing on his hand. <laughs> Looking at how the lights look and like the sound effects, it's literally fireworks. <laughs> she is just a fireworks show right now. But it seems like she's out of control. Only Mal can help her to calm down. But there is now some hope for Mel and Alina to defeating the Darkling. Power, you've grown stronger, my Alina. Okay, that's a term of endearment I didn't expect to hear with the Darkling saying my Alina, but... And we're just gonna dive right into episode 3. Ew, like, I was disgusted by <laughs> the antlers in season 1, and I still have the same reaction now to like the sea whip bracelet Alina has going on now. With the flying ships in the book, I was so curious to see how they would adapt this and I think they did a good job. It looks so green screen with Mount Alina standing there, but... Up, so they had to float all the dead bodies on the harbor. <laughs> That's enough! Us as viewers, we do get to see a glimpse into Kaz's past and why he's being so like angry here but you can see by like the faces of the other crows that they're like whoa what happened here i can't background is just like in a cage <laughs> in the middle of a room alina's failing at her attempt at the fold it's honestly i think it's mental but with the flashback to like the darkling scenes it's the influence of the Darkling getting into her mind, maybe? Well, I know it's been a number of years, but people swear I remain boyishly handsome. My side of it. Now to reveal that it is Nikolai. <laughs> Alina Starkov. Starkov, Alina. You heard you were dead. Bastard! <laughs> oh gosh, Alina is punching the prince. It's a valid reaction. My jaw feels much better now, thank you for asking. You can tell everyone you were punched by a Volkra. And I do think for Nikolai and Alina, there's like hints of like maybe a romance. That's what I we got in the books, but let's see how they do it in the show. And so far, I'm very liking their beginnings of their relationship. Your family in a Volkra Bisque, did you find them? And I really do like how we're seeing Zoya. And if you have read King of Scars, you do know that Zoya has a role to play there. I'd still like to know why you didn't tell me. Tell you what? That we'd met before. We do have the beginnings of the relationship between Jesper and Wylan. And it seems like they had previous relations before. So that's interesting. And I can't wait to see like more cute interactions between these two. He intends on taking me alive. So you can put me back in the menagerie. I won't let that happen. Why should I believe you? I feel like Inej here is very upset at Kaz because he keeps on saying, I'll protect you, but he's not being truthful to her, to the crew, about why Kaz made the issue with Pekka even larger than it could have been. 
is he going to take off his gloves? I guess not. <laughs> was there anyone to protect you? Was there no one to protect you? But I love Kaz and Inej's scenes and their interactions. They're always so intense. I love them. Okay, Kaz, like, having his cane. He still handles himself quite well in a fight, and I really like to see that. You're gonna tell me where to find the fire, but we need to find the third amplifier. Firebird. Okay, so everyone's now trying to find the firebird because Alina couldn't destroy the fold of the two, but now she needs three. I bring you under the wing of the royal family. My name becomes a shelter to you. This is a proposal proposal. You're suggesting I'm marriage. I'm proposing a love match. Just a political alliance of Grisha and Akazatia. And we have a weird proposal by Nikolai to Alina. It's a, it makes sense, really, in this case. I've seen what you both mean to each other. I understand if you decline, but I hope you'll weigh the options and consider the benefit. And I do like how Nikolai words it here that he's still being quite respectful of Alina and Mel, of their relationship. I finally found a weapon to end all of this. What weapon? Suffering. <laughs> Suffering. Well, it just makes you wonder what Kaz is planning and plotting for Pekka. And he's very intense <laughs> in what he says here. You've come back, little saint. I know you. My Alina. Okay, so now the Darkling is deliberately connecting with Alina. Honestly, it's giving Edward Twilight vibes in a more creepier way. <laughs> and um, what is Alina doing? Um, oh, Nikolai. Ooh. <laughs> I've made my decision. I think she said yes. It's going to be a yes to get married. Or like, at least pretend to be engaged to Nikolai, but I think so far the season is so good <laughs> and I'm so sorry. I know I sound super super congested. I apologize for that. I hope to get better before filming more reactions. I'm super excited to see what happens from here with the Darkling with Alina. I'm very very happy with the casting of Nikolai. He's very charming, very roguish. With the crows, I feel like they're just trying to get their footing the season still but i'm liking the tension that we're seeing within the crew with kaz and his leadership i think i'm just gonna end this video here um thank you so much for watching don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to see more future videos and i'll see you all in my next reaction video bye